Yo, 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 this is Coach Ray here, back for another video. Um, just a heads up, uh, the piecewise videos are going to be crazy because I'm just going to keep recording and going through from one lesson to another. We probably won't fit whole lessons on one videos, so just watch them all. Thank you. All right, um, so we just talked about my dog getting groomed, and uh, a small dog might cost 20 bucks, a bigger dog might cost uh, 30 bucks, and then a huge dog might be a different way to figure out how much that, that dog's going to cost to get cut and washed. Okay, and I'm going to relate that to what we're looking at here. Um, we're starting with evaluating piecewise functions, all right, and specifically this is what a piecewise function is. Our f of x equals this sideways mustache is called a brace. And there are three pieces to this piecewise function. And real quick, I think I should mention this. I have no idea why these little yellow lines with the WJ started showing up. Uh, I'm going to try to fix that, but I don't know what they are. Sorry. Okay, anyway, our piecewise function, we've got f of x. We've got three pieces to it. So what I want you to see here is these boundaries. Okay, Over on the right here, these are called boundaries. All right? And so these numbers won't make sense for my dog anal analogy, but I think it will still help. So if x were the weight of the dog, then what this is saying is if your the weight of your dog is less than one pound, you would use this formula to calculate how much you owe for that dog. Okay? Now if your dog is bigger, okay, and we're going to talk about this part right here, then you would use this formula. So let's talk about this. If you covered up this one is less than or equal to in the back, okay, so if I cover this up and I just look at the front. It says x is less than 4. That makes sense, right? That means your dog weighs less than 4 pounds. But at the same time, this is going on to this back part, which you have to read backwards. So if I read this backwards, it says x is greater than or equal to 1, meaning if my dog is bigger than or equal to 1. Okay, so if I put both of those pieces of information together at the same time, I'm saying my dog is smaller than 4, but bigger than 1. Another way of saying that in English is my dog weighs in between 1 and 4 pounds. Does that make sense? So this notation might be new to you with two inequalities here, but that's what that says. We're going to use that all year long. All right, and then lastly, if my dog weighs over 4 pounds, let's do an example. If my dog weighed 10 pounds, for example, I would plug in 10 over here for x. 6 times 10 is 60. 60 minus 3 is 57. So I would owe 57 bucks for that dog, which seems like a lot. But that's how we use piecewise functions, is whatever these boundaries are, they're determining which of these pieces do I use. Okay. All right, so let's start evaluating um, this first problem, f of negative 3. It is basically saying when x is negative 3, I want to know what y is. Another way of saying that is when x is negative 3, where is my function? Okay, we'll look at that more in a little bit. What I need to do is, okay, if x is going to be negative 3, I need to come over here to my boundaries and figure out where am I plugging in my negative 3. Okay, so this is kind of saying if your dog weighs negative 3 pounds, which of these three formulas are you going to use? All right, so down here, if x is negative 3, the negative 3 is not greater than or equal to 4, so we're not using the bottom line. Negative 3 is not in between 1 and 4, so we're not using the middle line. Obviously, negative 3 is smaller than 1, so we are using the top line. So I'm going to plug in negative 3 right here for x, and it's going to look like this. Uh, f of negative 3 equals 6 times negative 3 minus 3. So f of negative 3 equals, that would be negative 18. Um, oh wait, I'm plugging in the wrong one. Yeah, okay, awesome. just kidding. Pretend like that wasn't on video. Okay, so I'm plugging into the top one, which is 3 times negative 3 and then plus 1. So 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 1 is probably negative 8. So that is all we're doing to evaluate that um, f of negative 3. All right, next one. I'm evaluating f of 1. So I've got to look at these boundaries. Yeah, question. Why is it negative 3? This? So this is, uh, the question is, why is there an f in front of that negative 3? This is just notation how we write things. If the question was asking me to, to evaluate f of negative 3, so my answer is saying f of negative 3 equals negative 8. Okay, just how we write it, not actually math. Like it's not f times negative 3 or anything like that. All right, next one, f of 1. So when x is 1, I need to figure out which of these boundaries to use. And there's a 1 in two places here, so this could mess us up. But if you look closely, it's not too hard. If x were 1, is 1 less than 1? No. 
Okay, so we're not using this top function. We are using the middle one because if x is 1, then 1 is greater than or equal to 1 if I read that backwards. All right, so if I know I use the middle one, this is just a constant here, this 2. So I'm not even having to plug anything in. If I know I'm using the middle one, then the answer is just my constant of 2. If there's no variable to plug into, then yeah. All right, f of 3. Are you here for your present? Yes. OK. But I love this. And I'm recording a video, so you're officially on a YouTube video. All right, f of 3. Um, so when x is 3, I'm figuring out which uh, part or which piece I'm plugging in here. 3 is clearly between 1 and 4. So I'm using the middle one again. Since I'm using the middle one, there's no variable. I'm just putting my constant of 2. I'm done. Okay, keep on moving. F of 4, we kind of talked about this before. If I look at this middle, uh, middle piece, 4 is not less than 4. That's not true, so I'm not using the middle one. 4 is greater than or equal to 4, so that's where I'm using it. All right, so I'm coming over here. So I'm doing 6 times 4 minus 3. So f of 4 equals 24 minus 3 is probably 21. All right, I know I'm going quick, but I think we're doing okay. I'm just going to keep moving. f of 7. 7 fits in with this bottom one, where 7 is greater than or equal to 4. So I'm going to use this bottom piece. So 6 times 7 minus 3. So f of 7 equals 42 minus 3. So f of 7 equals 39. There's my answer. All right, last one, f of 0. 0 is, I'm looking at my boundaries again. 0 is less than 1, so I'm using the top one. So this is going to say 3 times 0 plus 1. So f of 0, 3 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. There we go. Okay, I'm going to, um, are there any questions on that right now? I'm going to stop this video here just so we can break it up into kind of normal pieces so that piecewise videos aren't too crazy. So that is example one of evaluating piecewise functions. Uh, more piecewise videos to come.